Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chairman of the Brent Scowcroft Centre, General James L. Jones. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here. Let me, uh, normally, uh, you would be welcoming uh, General Brant Scowcroft. Unfortunately, he is not feeling well this evening and, and is uh, not going to be able to join us, uh, but we wish him a very speedy recovery. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing serious, but uh, uh, please allow me to be uh, an inadequate substitute. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Atlantic Council's 2013 Distinguished International Leadership Awards. This is an event that is sure to eclipse the notoriety of the recent Washington Correspondence Dinner. <laughs> Judging by the turnout this evening, and may I say that uh, to President Obama, my former boss, you can go ahead and have your drink with Senator McConnell. Tonight we get to have a drink with Hillary Clinton. And tonight we will honor the former Secretary of State. We will honor the current NATO Secretary General, and, uh, Andrews Rasmussen, the Chevron Chairman and CEO, John Watson, a legendary American performer, Tony Bennett, and the great Colombian musician and social activist, Juanes. We will also launch the Adrian Arch, thank you, Adrian Arch Latin American Center, which will become the Atlantic Council's 10th center Please join me in thanking Adrienne for her support of the Atlanta Council's newest center. Thank you, Adrienne. So tonight's awardees, the new center, and the very makeup of this audience underscore the remarkable global reach and the increasing impact of the Atlantic Council. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have over 700 guests from 33 countries in the audience. Thank you very, very much for being here. But I suppose that the real reason I'm standing before you this evening is primarily due to the fact that our chairman of the past four years, now our Secretary of Defense, got himself another job, and the shoes he left behind are so big that we have yet to find the right person to fill them. So will volunteers please form a line at the first intermission off to the right of the stage. So I'm here to welcome you in my capacity as an executive committee member and chair of the Council's second newest center, the Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security. As Chuck Hagel's predecessor, as chairman of the Atlantic Council myself, I can attest to the importance and demanding nature of this role, and there are few who have performed it as well as Secretary Hagel did. He actually did a pretty good job for an Army sergeant. <laughs> as you know, that's high praise coming from a Marine. Although Secretary Hagel could not join us this evening, we're tremendously pleased and honored to have his wife, Lilibet, in attendance. Would you all please join me in thanking this extraordinary couple for their continuing service to the country and the international security of the dangerous and complex world we struggle to keep safe. Chuck Hagel's leadership of the Council over the past four years has included four of the most remarkable years of growth and influence in the Council's history. We wish him well in his new role, and we hope to see him at many Atlantic Councils in the near future. So it's now my pleasure to pass the baton uh, to Fred Kemp, our President and CEO. But before I do, let me say that it is now quite clear that the Council absolutely did the right thing in asking him to assume the mantle of leadership of the Atlantic Council six plus years ago. It's also clear that Fred did the right thing in giving up his cushy career as a journalist for some real work. Since that time, the Council has been transformed into one of the most dynamic, effective, productive, and influential organizations in international affairs. The Atlantic Council today is at the cutting edge of dealing with the important issues of our time and is increasingly seen as a place where people from all walks of international life can come together to discuss the most difficult issues we face. The Atlantic Council, under Fred's leadership, has not lost its relationship to its basic roots, which is the transatlantic link. To the contrary, it has expanded those roots to reflect the new realities of a multipolar world environment where the very definition 
of international security has undergone and is undergoing profound change. Thanks to Fred's tireless efforts, bolstered by the efforts and loyal support of a first-class staff, the Atlantic Council's contemporary relevance is rock solid in the face of 21st century challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, our President and CEO, Fred Kemp. Thank you for that kind introduction, General Jones. Uh, I guess one of the biggest differences of leaving the Wall Street Journal and coming here, if I'd stayed at the Journal, well, let's put it this way. I've worked for now uh, four cha chairmen, former uh, Ambassador to London, Henry Caddo, General Jim Jones, Senator, now Secretary Chuck Hagel, and now Interim Chairman uh, Brent Scowcroft. Uh, so the only real difference is I'd be working for Rupert Murdoch. Um, General Jones, I want to, in front of this entire crowd, uh, thank you so much uh, for your service, not only to the Atlantic Council, but to the United States and to our great alliance. Thank you for your leadership, service, and for your friendship, General Jones. Uh, as regulars of this event know, our MCs are usually Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough. And I am not replacing them this evening. Uh, they did a fantastic job over the past four years, but we decided to give them a break tonight. They were nice enough to put uh, Adrian Arsht on the show this morning with me to, uh, to get the word out about this new Latin American Center. Uh, like Billy Crystal at the Oscars, uh, Mika and Joe are hard to replace, so we haven't done it. Uh, but we would rather utilize what theater professionals call uh, the voice of God to protect, to provide the connecting tissue of the program. Uh, Secretary General Rasmussen, you may want to listen to this demonstration of the voice of God. Noah, I want you to build me an alliance. Make it consist of 28 countries, all paying no less than 2% of their GDP for defense, and placing no caveats on the use of their militaries. Uh, sound good, uh, Mr. Secretary General? Though I'm not quite sure why uh, divine intervention has a British accent. Uh, knowing jo Joe Scarborough and knowing Mika, I would imagine Mika would say something like, uh, Joe would think it appropriate that he has been replaced by deity. Um, at this point, Mika and Joe would ask you to turn off your electronic devices. I will just say, uh, keep them on, turn them on silent, and begin to tweet. Uh, you can do Atlant at Atlantic Council and hashtag AC Awards, hashtag AC Awards, uh, uh, if your dinner partner allows you. Uh, we heard, uh, you heard us talk in the film about seminal moments, about historic inflection points, what's true about all those I mentioned in the film, 1918, 1945, 1989, is how clear it was in those years that the world was changing, but how very unclear it was in what direction it would change and how history would unfold. It was human agency, constructive leadership, and yes, sometimes destructive leadership that determined outcomes. We participated in the National Intelligence Council's Global Trends Report. I know some of our partners in the audience are here. It's well worth reading because it really does capture the essence of our new historic inflection point, where we also don't know the outcome. But at the Atlantic Council, we believe the Euro-Atlantic community working more effectively and purposefully together with its global friends and allies, we don't believe that can solve the world's problems, but we believe it's a precondition for dealing with most of the world's problems. Uh, the opening film uh, replaced my usual commercial moment uh, for the Atlantic Council, so uh, don't act too disappointed. I won't recount all the accomplishments of our nine, now 10 programs and centers, much as I am tempted to do so, but they have been considerable in the past year and you can look at them all on our website, acus.org. Instead, I would ask the following people to stand 
so we can thank them for their service to the Atlantic Council. Please hold your applause until all the groups that I name are standing. First of all, please rise all Atlantic Council board directors and please stay standing. All, all, and, and please stay standing and please join them, all International Advisory Board members. All, all Atlantic Council members. This is the ultimate community of influence. Thank you for everything you do for the Atlantic Council. Uh, now I want to have a group stand that I couldn't be more proud of. You make my job easy every day. You are the best at what you do in Washington. Uh, could first please stand all Atlantic Council program and center directors. Please stand Atlantic Council program and center directors. And, and all Atlantic Council staff and senior fellows, all Atlantic Council staff and senior fellows, please rise. Bless you all. Um, given the history of the Council and our future challenges, it is fitting tonight, as General Jones also indicated, that our first honoree is one of the most gifted and resourceful Secretary Generals of the greatest security alliance the world has never ever known, not to mention his service to his own country as Prime Minister. He will be introduced by the woman who first brought him to the United States in the first place some 30 years ago, and their friendship over that period of time underscores our convic conviction that we don't just have an al alliance of countries, we have an alliance of people. So over to that divine voice for the introduction. <laughs> 